to the Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. The Two Perspectives of Professor Moore. Research is fun, and losing professors is not. Galactic Cycle 153234.75 Entry Dean Hedifus Professor Moore is still missing, and somehow this is my fault. Counselor Noran and several members of the board have called me today to express their frustration with my inability to manage this creature of chaos. He is destroying my career without even being present. I am supposed to be running a school, not babysitting a single professor. This is insane. Further, we have recently got a large transfer of Mokhtar students from the Central Galactic University. While normally this would be a cause of rejoice for the prestige that it would bring, they transferred because they heard that we had a human professor. They are now threatening to write, which, given their melodic voices, would annoy to no end. We still haven't recovered from the near Filium War, and now I have another incident brewing with the Mokhtar. I can't help but wonder who would be insane enough to kidnap Professor Moore. If it wasn't making my life hell, I would almost feel sorry for them, and the damage that I can only imagine the Professor is doing. Additionally, we were successfully able to take the monster out of carbonate stasis. During the unfreezing process, we did note the side effect of patches of hair falling out, still attached to the carbonate that flaked off. It appears to be most displeased, making sharp exhale of air and having what's left of its hair stand on end any time I come near. I think the monster actually remembers that I froze it. I had the beast in a cage when we unfroze it, but somehow it escaped and is now loose again in my quarters. Now, Council Noron is demanding an update on the creature's status. It has disappeared again. I am filling in the requested report and before and after scans of the beast. Unfortunately, I don't have much information on the standards of the beast. With smug satisfaction, I have referred the counselor to Professor Moore for this information as he forced the beast upon me. Galactic Cycle 153234.78 Entry Professor Clay Moore My travel with Mobad Forst was been fascinating. I find I must question what effects the multiple clonings, radiation exposure, and possibly questionable genetics to start with have had on him. He has an unquestionable brilliant mind, though the sanity of it is more than a little questionable. Sometimes it seems he is completely present and lucid, and at other times I think he gets lost in his own mind. If a perfectly symmetrical face is considered the epitome of beauty, then he may be close to asymmetrical as I have ever seen on a human. One eye appears to be slightly smaller and lower than the other. His hairline has receded to the crown of his head, and even his mouth and nose are slightly crooked. Additionally, his torso appears to be disproportionate to the rest of his body, giving him an almost comical appearance with his short legs. All of these, plus insanity, violent behavior, and social problems, are what led the Confederacy to ban cloning and sentience over 200 years ago. Today, the practice is only used to restore extinct species. Unfortunately, the former tourist-centric planet, Dino World, is a great example of why even this is highly discouraged. Mobad is known for being morally repugnant and ambiguous. He is known to have destroyed hundreds of ships and has been confirmed dead a few times. Inevitably, he shows back up later, believed to be because of his home-built cloning kit. No reports of him have occurred recently, meaning he has either been inactive or has been outside of the area tracked by human authorities. Given his knowledge of the galaxy, which he isn't even supposed to be in, I suspect I know which. Mobad has led us to a number of interesting potential test subjects. Most intriguing are the Critters. They look almost identical to the monsters in the classic cult classic movie, Critters. They are hairy balls full of teeth with stumpy arms and legs. They appear to be scavengers primarily and are scared people. 
Mobad also had a number of examples of technology that I am not familiar with to include some form of magnetism generator. Several ores I did not recognize. Four strange ships of unknown design or origin. A pulsing fleshy pod with an X-like indentation on the top. Scan showed the pod to have a spider-like creature with a tail inside of it. As well as a frightening large amount of chlorine trifluoride which from the attached research I quickly decided I wanted nothing to do with. Despite these assistant offers, I declined to purchase any of them as I had concerns regarding how they were required. He has even offered to get me some nocturne subjects for testing, but relented when I reminded him that they were not currently at war with anyone. They were sapient, and it would cause an intergalactic incident. I suspect my reaction had more to do with his change of heart than any of the reasons I gave. I may have heard him mutter something about taking slavers as slaves was a public service. I should be back at the Pan Galactic University in two days with my small population of critters. I have bought ten using my research grant money from Mobad. I look forward to getting back to my quarters in the Pan Galactic University. I hadn't realized how much like home it has become. I also hope that the Dean Hedifus hasn't been too worried about me. Mobad has assured me that should I need anything for research just to let him know and he will gladly help me get it. He even offered to obtain them if I knew someone shipping them as well. I decided to leave that alone. Galactic Cycle 153234.78 Entry Dean Hedifus Counselor Doran showed up in person at the university again today. In a private meeting, he informed me that Professor Moore was here as a part of an agreement with humanity. I learned that it was the humans who crushed the Nocturne at Delcat. He fears that my loss of their professor could bring their wrath upon us. I have never felt so sick in my life. Not only may my career be over, but a race of destructive as the Professor, descending upon our galaxy in revenge is stuff of nightmares. While not individually intimidating, I've seen the insane things that they feel are normal and acceptable. We have redoubled our research, and have even had an elite first contact team from the Security Council attached to help. They seem to be focusing their search on nearby systems and do not believe that the Professor is on planet, despite us having no record of him leaving. I tried to rest my quarters, but my pillow appears to be moist and has a super strong smell. I believe the monster still lurks in my home as the bag of the cat food was completely shredded along with the curtains. I also found piles of partially digested food scattered around my quarters, I have still not spotted it, though. If I am lucky, maybe it'll end my misery if I sleep. Galactic Cycle 153234.80 Entry, Professor Clay Moore I must say that it is great to be back at the Pan Galactic University. Mobad dropped me off at my lab, saving me the walk out from the spaceport. I am not entirely sure how he got his ship on the roof, but figured it was a case some questions were better left unasked. Not because he wouldn't answer. He was very truthful. You just didn't always want to know the answer. Tomorrow, I'll check in with Dean Hedifus to see if he's going to give me any courses to teach, or if he still wants me to focus on my lab. I know I'll need some help around the lab, so I put together a request for research assistance. I'll petition the Dean to give them some course credit. I hope he approves my request. Galactic Cycle 153234.81 Entry, Dean Hedifus Professor Moore finally showed up today. I never thought I'd be so excited to see him back. Counselor Noron even came out to welcome him back and ensure that he was okay. How he returned, or for how that matter how he left, we have yet to determine. No ship was recorded as if docking. He just showed up in his lab on morning... I am still not convinced that he ever left the planet, though I am at a loss to where he could have been. He appears to have some retar with him. I am familiar with them as student lost a few here a couple cycles ago, and we occasionally see them, but they are psi creatures. Professor Moore wanted to hire some research assistants and to know if we could use the Rotar for some of his research. 
I was so relieved that I told him I would give full course credit and he could hire as many as he needed. As far as the rotter went, I could get less if he wiped out the whole species of bourbon if I told him so. I am just relieved that he has returned. My job and the galaxy is safe for now. Also, the monster loose in my quarters has developed a new disturbing habit. It'll hide in dark places, make scratchy noises and yowling sounds. If I try and look, it'll jump, puff up and exhale hair sharply and run right at me. I think I might have heard myself falling off my bed when the monster ran out last night. Galactic Cycle 153234.81 Entry Professor Clay Moore I knew Dean had a first like me, but he was so excited to see my return, you would almost think that he never saw my note. Even Counselor Loran swung by to say hello. He insisted I focus on my research and not worry about courses this term. He is incredibly considerate. He even approved me to hire as many assistants as I wanted with full course credit. I did get a message from Dr. Witzer asking how my travels with Mobert went. She said that she knew that he could be eccentric, but he is extremely helpful in acquiring research material and very resourceful. I can't help but wonder how well she knows him. Once I had approval, I posted a position for lab assistants. I think five would be more than enough to focus on all my research projects. I was shocked when almost immediately her application started coming in. I had planned on taking a week, but within three hours I had to cut it off due to the number of students applying. Ultimately, I selected five. Quali, an alia from my chemistry and physics classes, surprised me at her insistence on helping. Razzle, one of the photo from my physics class that had the sensitivity of ultrasonic sounds. It apparently puts them into an orgasmic state of bliss. I have banned headphones as well as crashes while in the lab as these may be too distracting. Carl Blewey, one of the Nurag my chemistry class who has since recovered from his accidental poisoning. He had tried to get into my physics class and even my genetics class unsuccessfully and came to see me in person. Chillen and Flaylen from Mokhtar, I had a surprising number of the species apply. These two came with solid backgrounds in biology and medicine and were most insistent on joining my lab. There were hard decisions as I had to review over 500 applicants, with many appearing at my door and wanting in. Reviewing the council and confederate research requests, I have the following projects to start on. 16 chemistry-related projects, 2 for mining charges, 4 for medical applications, and 10 for industrial cleaning supplies. Railgun Refinement Projects Refinement of Synthetic Transfer Data Manager, STD, Cat Mobert, apparently replaced Clippy with one of the university terminals to recognize galactic standard. Development of Genetic Compounds Improving Human and Other Species Survivability in Space All of these projects appear to be jointly sponsored by DARPA and the Security Council. Also, I told Mobert, I could use a few more critters for my research, as a few I had would not be sufficient for the projects, as I had been assigned. Galactic Cycle 153234.87 Entry Dean Hedifus Well, Professor Moore safely tucked away in his lab, I have focused on trying to figure out what to do with the monster in my quarters. I still don't see him except when he chooses to show up. I have found that the monster also clawed a hole in the mesh leading from my bedroom to my balcony. So far, I must assume that it is still in the quarters as I have not found its body or any evidence that it was killed by the fall. Today, I also found a partially eaten raktar in my bed. I awoke screaming as it was still facing me. The first contact team of the security council had assigned was able to get me information of the old Detroit monster. They believe the creature is actually trying to establish friendship with me by bringing me uh, food. While typing this report, a graphical version of it ran across my screen. I may need a mood-stabilizing beverage or two. Galactic Cycle 153234.86 Entry Professor Claymore I am concerned, and I don't know if I should report this to Dean Hedifus or not. Lately, he seems to be especially distraught. I think I even smelled intoxicants on him this morning. 
I left my lab today to find what appeared to be a large shipping container sitting on the ground with a note from Moved saying that it held the critters that I requested. Being as the container was empty, I feared that they may have escaped. I have no idea how many were in there, but the container could have held thousands. I ultimately decided that I would put 20 credit bounty on each one the student could bring me. Already this morning, I have spotted what must be close to a hundred around the dumping points on campus. I have assigned their chemistry projects to Chillen and Flaylen, the mortal students with the excellent biology backgrounds. They keep telling me how a relative of theirs was involved in the first contact and how proud they are of working with me. These two are provided to be true delight to work with. Kablewi is working with the Razzle on the railgun project. They seem to have a natural interest in the project and are making good progress. That left Kuali dealing with the STD Mobad left on the network. She seemed to be progressing the fastest, helping train it and use the correct words. Galactic Cycle 153234.86 Entry Dean Hedifus We appear to have a rudder infestation developing. This is terrible as once they run short of food, there is little that they won't eat. We may have to go on a lockdown until they cannibalize enough of themselves to bring the population under control. Looks like I approved Professor Moore's experiments just in time. The monster in my quarters has now started leaving partially eaten rutters around every morning. I found one on my table this morning. It is slowly starting to come out more often when I can see it. It is a truly terrible looking beast with a missing eye, ear, scars and partial tail. Today, I thought that it was going to attack me, but instead rubbed on my leg for a minute before going over to sleep on my bed. With the rata I'm seeing everywhere around campus, I'm starting to be glad that I have this creature around. I wonder if the medical department could do anything for its injuries. I found that they were starting to work on the railgun project on the roof, not wanting to repeat of the severe structural damage to the physics labs, I have required them to move it to the basement. Galactic Cycle 153234.88 Entry Professor Clay Moore Quali has proven exceptional at dealing with the STD cat moment left. I am proud to announce that Sexist Races, Classical Literature, is now safe for teaching in a public institute. I still find the stupid thing annoying as it likes to open and close random documents. Kablewi and Wazzle have been excitedly working on the railgun in the basement as they were required to do so by Dean Hedifus. They claim they will have something important to show me tomorrow. I really look forward to seeing what they have accomplished. I am proud of my students. Also, the bounty of 20 credits has had a tremendous effect. The students have already caught way more than I thought could have been in their crate. I'm starting to think that these critters breed quickly. On a side note, Chillen and Flaylen have not accomplished as much as I would like. One seems to be stressed, while the other seems nonplussed. I'm not sure whether they will work out long term. Galactic Cycle 153234.88 Entry Dean Hedifus Things are looking up. The literature classes can finally resume. I don't know how, but overnight all the text fixed itself. I was also informed by biology calls that the creature's injuries are too old to repair. I've decided to name him Elf for alien life form. I felt clever coming up with that one. Professor Moore's lab seems to be coming along nicely too. I noticed that he seems to have collected a lot of rata for his research too. Not sure what he's going to do with them. Not overly concerned. Galactic Cycle 153234.89 Entry Professor Clay Moore I worry that Dean Hedifus will be upset with me. Club Bowie and Razzle demonstrated the improvements of the railgun. And to say the least, they are spectacular. I am glad the weapon was fixed in an upward position as I have now a large hole through the roof of my lab. No one was injured as we were all watching, but they managed to make a railgun rounds that split apart on contact much like the traditional ripper round. Kilblewi and Razzle were dazzled for sure. Unfortunately, the second and third floors of my lab now have a large hole through them. Kablowi and Razzle have been assigned to start building a decompression chamber for the genetics testing. I don't think we need many more railgun work. Chillen and Flaylen did make a discovery today, finally. Unfortunately, I think it is a new form of intoxicant rather than a medicine. 
They had spent half the morning smoking it when I arrived and their eyes were full glazed. While I must admit feeling better after what little I inhaled, I doubt another drug is what the galaxy needs. I think I'm going to assign them to work on Razzle. Galactic Cycle 153234.89 Entry Dean Hedifus Well, guess I should start with the incident today. Not surprisingly, Professor Moore's lab had a rather large hole blown in it. The surprise was it was his lab assistants that did it. He is infecting them with madness. I think I may just have to graduate these five students rather than ever allow them back into the general population. I suspect research institutes across the galaxy will snap them up given the level of madness that they've been exposed to. As a side note, Alf appears to have developed severe gas from eating Rutta. I'm currently sleeping in my office. I guess I should be glad things are back to normal. That, or wonder what sins I've committed to be punished so. End of chapter.